Michael Faraday had a concept that explained the dynamics of the electric field. He used tubes and these Faraday tubes is what this video is about. To give a deeper understanding we need to understand the concept of these lines of force by making use of Faraday tubes. J.J. Thompson in his book Electricity and Matter explains this into detail in the first chapters of his book. And I will explain it to you in this video. Enjoy! Michael Faraday, a great, great researcher, had the concept that the whole field of electricity was filled with lines of force and that it had a fibrous structure like a bundle of hay or straw. And to Faraday this concept was a reality and he gave physical properties to these lines of force, to these Faraday tubes. In this video I will use straws to visualize some of these properties. Now this straw is inflexible, but in reality these straws are elastic. You can stretch them up and they give tension. And another property of these Faraday tubes is they repel each other. So if you have a bundle of them, they want to get away from each other. First we're going to take a look at two charged particles, one positive and one negative. So they attract. And what causes this attraction are these Faraday tubes because they represent tension. Like an elastic band that is stretched, it wants to stretch back. And this tension is what pulls together the particles. Figure 2 shows two particles A and B. And they are oppositely charged. A is positive and B is negative. Between them and around them you see the lines of force represented by the Faraday tubes. And as you can see between A and B most lines are concentrated. Now as these tubes have tension A and B are pulled together by having more tension between them than on the opposite sides of them. Left of A and right of B are less lines of force, less Faraday tubes, less tension. And between A and B are the Faraday tubes concentrated, so there is more tension between them. And this difference in tension causes them to be attracted to each other. We have now looked at attraction of opposite charged particles. But now we are going to take a look at equally charged particles, positive or negative, both. They repel each other. Now why is that? Again, this is explained by making use of Faraday tubes and the tension they represent. Let's take a look. Figure 3 shows two particles that are equally charged, so they're both positive. A is positive and B is positive. These Faraday tubes are always terminated on conductors. One end represents the positive charge and the other end represents the negative charge. So if A and B are equally charged there won't be a Faraday tube between them. As the charge is equal there won't be any tension. Instead the dielectric lines of force, the Faraday tubes, are terminated on objects in the field around the particles, in conductors around the particles representing the negative charge. And because these lines are now concentrated outside of the region between A and B, because these lines are pushed apart, they are pushed sideways because they don't like to be together. So you can see between A and B there are no lines of force, there are no Faraday tubes. And instead of being pushed out of each other, you can now understand that it isn't a pushing but a pulling. 
The Faraday tubes are pulling away A and B from each other by being connected to the outside negatively charged particles of conducting material. So it is not a pushing away but a pulling away. The same action of pulling toward each other is now pulling them away from each other. We have now got the concept of tension and the pull it represents on a particle. Now let's step into another example. The example of a capacitor. A capacitor has two plates very close together and in between is a dielectric medium. And in this dielectric medium is set up a dielectric field when the plates are oppositely charged. So one plate is positive, the other is negative, and in between is set up the dielectric field made up of these Faraday tubes. These tubes represent tension, so they actually pull the plates together. And they repel each other, so when we have a, a, a bundle of them, between the capacitor plates, they want to get out. And if we make a short loop, a, a shortcut between the plates, they will be pushed out because with a, uh, a shortcut, these Faraday tubes are drawn into the molecular structure of the copper, of the conductor. Let's take a look at this. Figure five shows plate A and plate B being positive and negatively charged. In between is set up a dielectric field made up of Faraday tubes. And PQ is one of these Faraday tubes. If we now connect to this plate a shortcut, a wire of A, F, G, then these Faraday tubes will be pushed into that line because they repel each other, so they are pushed away from each other, sideways, transversely, into the wire of E, F, G. These Faraday tubes are disappearing into the molecular structure of the wire, the resistance of the wire being transferred, transmuted, transformed into heat radiation, which is a very high frequency. By moving sideways, because they push each other away, we have a transverse motion of these Faraday tubes. And these Faraday tubes drag along a volume of ether with them, which is a representative of the magnetic field. As more and more of these tubes are transformed into heat and into the magnetic field, the capacitor is emptied. The lines of force are pushed sideways out of the capacitor and the tension is removed from the plates and the voltage is dropping. Now here is the very important concept of longitudinal motion. I can show you this with a glass of water. Here we have a glass of water and one Faraday tube. In actuality we will have many of these. If we have the straw in the ether, the water represents the ether, and we move it sideways in a circular motion, the water is dragged along and it will create a vortex in the water, a water vortex. But in actuality we are talking about a ether vortex and this vortex has inertia, has momentum, has mass. So here is the water vortex that I'm talking about. This is how I see the ether flow of the magnetic field. A volume of ether that is set into motion by the dielectric field, by the Faraday tubes. These Faraday tubes, when they are spinning around in the ether, they set up such a vortex like we can see here. This vortex represents the magnetic field. So it is induced by the transverse sideways motion, oops, <laughs> transverse motion of the Faraday tube. Let me get another one. So new tube, new Faraday tube. Of course the flexibility is 
uh, also real with the, the Faraday tubes because they are elastic. But what happens if we move the Faraday tube longitudinal? When it is moving longitudinal into the ether, the water, it doesn't move the water. It has no friction, it, it doesn't drag along the water, the water stays still. It isn't set into motion. So the ether volume doesn't react to it. There is no momentum, there is no inertia. And this represents the longitudinal motion of the dielectric field. So if we have set up a dielectric field, we can set up a longitudinal motion of the lines of force of the Faraday tubes through that ether between the plates. And it doesn't have inertia, it does not set up a magnetic field, it has no resistance. This is a very important concept to understand. If we charge a capacitor with inductive spikes, we can see the charging of the capacitor is in stages of instant voltage rise, very rapid. What I imagine what happens with these Faraday tubes when they are spun around in transverse method is that they bend, whereby the elasticity makes them bend. By the drag of the ether they are dragging along, so they, they are making loops, they are making these uh, elastic band loops that drag along the ether. And this volume of ether represents the inertia and the momentum of the field. So this is the magnetic field, consisting of these Faraday tubes. At the same time, these Faraday tubes also represent the dielectric field in a capacitor. These Faraday tubes are always terminated on conductors, but they can also be closed looped on themselves. To visualize this, I will use VR. Let's take a look. Here in the middle, this blue and uh, red is a coil, a bifilar coil. You can see this coil in another video of mine. And around this, you see this beautiful flow of ether. Now, this is not a magnetic field. This is a different kind of field. What is happening here is that these lines are the Faraday tubes, bundles of them all around. And these Faraday tubes are closed looped on themselves. So a Faraday tube can be closed looped like this, closed looped on itself. It holds a volume of ether inside of this loop that is moving around with it. And what you can do is make a donut of these rings that are, that are closed looped upon themselves. This is a method of transferring energy through the ether. As this is looping uh, through the ether, it moves and it holds a volume of ether that moves through the ether and it is uh, pretty much frictionless and lossless. Such a coil, a bifilar coil, I believe can make these beautiful waveforms. This creates a pushing of the ether this way and a pulling in of the ether that way. So the ether volume is moving in on, the, on, the, on itself around this bifilar coil. JJ Thompson goes a lot deeper into this concept and he explains that the mass of a object that is charged is held in the volume of ether by the Faraday tubes. And this is, of course is a very interesting and a little bit hard to grasp concept that the mass is caused 
by the volume of ether that is being held by these Faraday tubes. You can look up the book yourself, J.J. Thompson, Electricity and Matter. It's pretty old, but it is very refreshing for your mind to get a grasp of uh, momentum, inertia, electric fields and how these all interact. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed while doing so. If you want to make a donation that would be greatly appreciated, there is a PayPal link in the link below. And if you value this video and the information in it, please share it. Share it with people who you think they will be benefited from it. Thank you for watching and until next time.